Money matters. Joseph and his wife Christina currently live in San Francisco. Christina is pregnant. She is a makeup artist at the mall. She does not make much money, but the job makes her happy. Joseph is an investment banker. He makes a good amount of money, but does not like his job. He feels like he does the same thing every day and like he is not making a difference. He also does not like his co workers. He feels like his co workers only care about money. Back when Joseph was in school, he dreamed of being a college professor. He liked teaching because he loved the feeling when his students understood something. He also wanted to be around people who loved to learn. He believed that knowledge is power. Joseph wanted to quit his job at the bank. Christina did not want him to, though. How are we going to afford to take care of the baby? she asked. Maybe we can give the baby to my brother and his wife for a couple of years, Joseph suggested. That is ridiculous. If we do that, then the baby is pretty much theirs, she said. Only for two years, Joseph said. You need to think of the baby, Christina said. Why don't you get a higher paying job then? Joseph asked. It's not easy, you know. I didn't finish high school, Christina said. This was a sensitive topic for Christina. Joseph knew that and stopped talking. Joseph stopped talking. He decided to stick with his job at the bank. Jogging around the neighborhood. Every day, Tiffany jogged five miles around her house. She loved running around her neighborhood. It made her feel refreshed for the rest of the day. She felt more healthy and productive after her runs. She did not always run the same route. She liked to change her route to make running more fun. Sometimes she ran to grocery stores, and sometimes she ran to her friend's house. It was a new journey each time. In order to run, she had to have the right gear. She always wore quality athletic clothes. She had to wear good running shoes that were durable. She kept her hair in a high ponytail so her hair would not interfere with her face. She kept a water bottle with her at all times to continue to stay hydrated. Sometimes she ran at the gym, but she preferred the fresh air. There was something about seeing the trees and cars passing by that made her happy. She always listened to music when she ran. The music kept her motivated and distracted her from the feeling of being tired. Today she decided to run to a movie theater. She was meeting a friend there later. She had her water, music, and a smile ready. She started running early so that she would be there on time. An innocent mistake. The vase in the middle of the house was broken. Someone had knocked down the family's vase. The mom was furious. She had treasured that vase and was upset that it was now broken. She did not know who broke it since she was not at home that day. The only two people who were home were her daughter Violet and son Harry. She asked them who broke the vase. Both of them were quiet. They refused to answer in fear of getting in trouble. She threatened to punish both of them if they did not give her an answer. They began to blame each other. They began to yell and tell their stories at the same time. She told each to explain their sides. Violet explained that they were playing tag and Harry tagged her while pushing her at the same time, causing her to knock the vase over. Harry explained that Violet tried to dodge his tag and hit the vase. There was no way for the mom to tell who was actually right. The mom decided it was an innocent mistake. She did not punish either of them. She just told them not to play tag in the house anymore. Harry and Violet had to be more careful next time. They apologized to their mom. They both felt terrible for upsetting her. They decided to be super good and started cleaning up the house. Pet shopping. Sarah found herself alone at home most of the time. Her parents were always at work and she had no siblings. Although Sarah had many friends, she wanted to get a pet. She was tired of being bored at home. However, Sarah did not know what pet she wanted. She kept changing her mind. And fell in love with all types of animals. She decided to go to the pet store and let her heart decide when she got there. She went to her local pet store. It was only a five minute walk from her house. She walked with her parents, who agreed to let her pick out a pet. Sarah vowed to take responsibility and be super careful with her new pet. The pet store worker greeted them and showed them around. There were all types of pets, including reptiles and furry mammals. Sarah loved the dogs and cats. She thought they were cute and playful. She decided to also look at some fish. She enjoyed the colors and their beautiful nature. 
but she wanted something more interactive. When she came across the bunnies, she knew that they were the pet for her. She knew a bunny was easier to take care of than a dog, but still playful. She picked up a bunny and fell in love with him. He was brown and white. She decided to name him Chester. Her new furry friend also liked her. Her parents approved and were also fond of her new pet. Do-it-yourself projects Sandra was moving into her new dorm. It was her first day of college. She wanted to make the dorm her own personal space. She wanted to design it with meaningful decorations that reminded her of home and the opportunities at school. She wanted to make herself feel comfortable in a foreign place. The dorm was an empty space where she could make her own. She shopped for decorations at her local stores and online websites. She found that many of the decorations were generic, so she decided to design her own decorations. She was excited to begin her do-it-yourself project. She looked up a bunch of tutorials and videos on arts and crafts. There were many easy projects. She could make the decoration on her own instead of having to buy it at the store, which would save her money and also allow her to customize her decorations. She was excited to start these projects. She began by printing a bunch of pictures of her family and friends. She wanted to remember the important people and the memories they made. She decided to make a collage with the photos. She laid the photos out in the shape of a bee to represent her name. She also decided to make paper lantern string lights. The lights were going to hang across her bed. She already felt excited to see how the decorations would look in her room. Christmas gift shopping. Christmas time was coming around. This meant it was time to shop for gifts for loved ones and prepare to spend time with them. Tammy wanted to get gifts for her parents and friends to show how thankful she was for their love and support. She wanted each gift to be special. She decided to combine store-bought merchandise with homemade items. She was going to customize each gift to make each one special. She decided to give her mom a handmade apron. Her mom loved to cook and bake in the house. She embroidered the words, World's Best Mom. Her dad loved to garden, so she decided to get him a plant and some gardening tools. Her friends were a little harder to get gifts for, since they each had different interests. She decided to give each of them jars with their favorite items. She customized each jar to match their personalities. She decorated the outside of the jar with drawings, ribbons, and buttons. This part was most fun for her. Inside the jar were candy, chocolate, stickers, keychains, and a photo they had taken together. She was excited to give her gifts to her friends. She loved seeing the smiles on their faces. She thought this way her gift would be more special. She also decided this year she would donate toys to children who were less fortunate. 
She thought this was a great way to celebrate Christmas. The old dog. Donald had a dog named Max. Max was 10 years old, which was quite old in dog years. Donald bought the dog to protect him and his family from danger. When Max saw suspicious activity, he barked out loud. There was one time when a robber tried to get into Donald's house. Thankfully, Max barked and Donald was able to stop the robber in time. Sometimes, though, Max would bark when he saw another dog. Donald would go outside thinking something bad was happening. But it was really just another dog. Donald went on a lot of hikes and walks with Max. Donald normally did not like to exercise, but he did not mind if it was with Max. Donald would also bring Max to the dog beach, where he could play with other dogs. Max was considered part of the family. He was even in the family holiday postcard picture. Donald knew, however, that Max was going to die pretty soon. He tried not to think about it. Donald came back home from school and filled up Max's water bowl as usual. Except this time, Max did not run to the water bowl like he usually did. Donald looked around the house for Max and found him lying down on the floor dead. Donald quickly ran to Max and tried to feel for his pulse. Max was officially gone. Donald and his family buried Max in their backyard. Donald cried for a long time and remembered all his good memories with Max. If only she waited one day. Vanessa had been eyeing a dress online for a long time. It was a long, white crochet dress, which cost $100. She was hoping the price would go down. She checked the website every day for one month, but the price never went down. She wanted the dress in the medium size. The website said there were only five more left. She did not want it to sell out. She finally bought the dress. A week later, it came to her house. Vanessa excitedly opened the package and the dress was perfect. It looked exactly the way it did on the website. Her cousin was throwing a party on a yacht that night. Vanessa wanted to wear the dress for that party. When Vanessa arrived, everyone complimented on how she looked. The dress was definitely worth it. Where did you get that dress? her cousin asked. Tula.com, Vanessa said. Her cousin went on the website. There were only two more in the size medium and one more in the size small. The next day, Vanessa decided to wear the same dress at her friend's dinner party. Hey Vanessa, nice dress. I just bought the same one today. It was such a good price, Jan said. You mean you don't think $100 is a good price? Vanessa said, Oh no, it was only $35, Jan said. Vanessa's jaw dropped. If only she waited one day. An ice cream accident. 
Cynthia and her friends were walking in the mall like they always do. They did this twice a month after the last class on Friday. Cynthia's favorite shop was actually the bookstore. Some of her friends liked shopping for clothes, and some of her friends liked the food at the mall. Look, Cynthia, your favorite singer is in Forever 21, said Martha. Cynthia turned around. When she was turning around, she knocked an ice cream cone out of a woman's hand, and it landed on the woman's shirt. The woman was upset. Cynthia apologized and started taking the ice cream off the woman's shirt. The woman was even more upset. How dare you touch me, she said. Cynthia apologized again. You're going to have to pay for this shirt and the ice cream, the woman said. Cynthia's friends started laughing. They thought it was funny that she was making a big deal out of the situation. Can't you just put the shirt in a washing machine? Why does she have to pay for your shirt? asked Martha. The stain is not going to come off, the woman said. It's all right, Martha. I'll just pay for it, Cynthia said. Cynthia asked the woman how much the shirt was. It was $147, she said. Cynthia reached into her wallet. Cynthia, this woman is clearly lying to you, Martha said. Cynthia thought about it. Martha was probably right. This woman was taking advantage of Cynthia's kindness. Cynthia asked for proof, and the woman could not give it to her. The woman walked away, embarrassed that she was caught lying. Cynthia was thankful for Martha. To be independent. Beverly has been in boarding school since she was 10 years old. Her parents put her in boarding school to make her a more independent person. Beverly was against it at first. She wanted to stay with her parents like most kids of her age. She started getting used to boarding school when she was about 15 years old. She would only see her parents during winter break and during the summer. Beverly is okay with it now because she is so used to not seeing her parents. Whenever she sees her parents, though, they spend almost every day together. However, Beverly is going to attend a university near her parents. In fact, the university is only 20 minutes away from their house. Beverly asked if they wanted her to stay with them. Her parents said that she should live in the dorms to make more friends. Beverly agreed. Even though Beverly lived close to her parents, she barely saw them because she was so busy. She did see them during winter break, though. Beverly wanted to study abroad in the summer in Italy. She asked her parents if they were okay with that. Absolutely not. Being alone in a different country is dangerous, her mom said. But I have been alone for so long. Isn't this why you put me in boarding school to begin with? I know how to be independent. I'm responsible and smart enough to go to Italy alone, she said. Honey, the truth is, we just wanted to spend summer with you, her dad said. That is when Beverly realized that even though her parents wanted her to be independent, they cherished spending time with her a lot. From skinny to muscular. John grew up skinny. Because of this, he was bullied a lot. Bigger guys would push him around, and girls would make fun of him for being skinnier than them. John decided to transform himself in college. He took advantage of the free gym at his college and went there every day from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. He lifted light weights at first and then moved on to heavier ones. Every three weeks, he increased the weight he lifted by five pounds. He also did push-ups, sit-ups, and pull-ups. He also drank protein shakes before he worked out. Protein shakes helped him gain muscle mass. John also changed his diet, too. He started eating foods like beef, eggs, brown rice, and beets. In six months, John was no longer skinny. He was muscular and no one bullied him in college. He felt a lot happier, too. 
He felt more confident about himself and was happier going to class every day. His friends from high school noticed the change and complimented him on his healthier body. John was so inspired by his own body change that he decided to create a program teaching high schoolers how to get stronger. He first taught at his old high school and then taught at several high schools nearby. Later, he made a DVD about how to get stronger. The DVD was sold worldwide. Eventually, John went on talk shows and wrote books about his journey. A fashion trendsetter. Jennifer liked to try new things when it came to fashion. She would get made fun of a lot, but she didn't care. One day, she decided to wear checkered pants to school. When she was walking in the hallway, her classmates stared at her and laughed. Wear some jeans, you freak, someone yet said. Jennifer ignored them. They were boring and jealous of her confidence, she said to herself. One month later, checkered pants were the most fashionable thing around. All the people, from kids to grandparents, were wearing them. It got popular after a famous singer started wearing checkered pants. Jennifer laughed. The people at school must be feeling dumb right now. People apologized to Jennifer. Fashion trends start small and end up getting bigger. Jennifer decided to wear rainbow-striped socks to school. Everyone thought she was weird and made fun of her. Jennifer reminded them about the last trend she set. People said that she was just lucky. Two weeks later, rainbow socks were in style. They were sold out everywhere. People now realized Jennifer was a trendsetter. Next week, Jennifer wore a headband. Normally, people would make fun of her, but this time, everyone was copying her. Every girl was wearing a headband at her school. Every day, people at her school would write down what Jennifer was wearing and copy her. A Beach Day It had been raining for the past few days in Southern California. Every day, people would hold umbrellas and walk around with jackets. Today, it was sunny. People were wearing dresses and flip-flops. It was a day for people to finally go out and get some sunshine. The sky was beautiful. The clouds were fluffy and scattered all across the sky. The sun was between the clouds. It was not too hot. The beach was one place many people decided to go on a sunny day. There were many beaches in Southern California. At the beach, the wind felt great. The water has the perfect temperature. It was perfect weather to stay at the beach. There were a lot of people there. There were kids, parents, students, and the elderly. Everyone was enjoying the beach. There were shops at the beach, too. Many food shops and carnival games were set up on the pier. With so many activities to do, one would never find oneself bored. There were long lines for funnel cakes and candy shops. Many people took this opportunity to go surfing or to fly a kite. Some even built sandcastles or worked on their tan. Everyone had a smile on his or her face. When the sun set, the sky turned a beautiful pink and orange. It was a photo-worthy moment. The Job Search Sarah wanted to get a job to save up money for her future. She did not want to keep asking her parents for money. She thought getting a job would be a good way to build her experience. Since she never had a job before, she decided to start with a simple part-time job. There were a lot of options out there. She could be a cashier, a tutor, a waitress, or an usher. She decided that a cashier job 
would be most suitable for her. This was a job that seemed simple enough that she could learn. It would also let her interact with people, which is her favorite thing to do. Sarah did not have a car, so she needed to find a job that was close to her home and school. She was still going to school, so she needed to find a job that was flexible. She walked around the restaurants and stores in her neighborhood. Some were hiring, others had all their positions filled up. She applied to 10 different places. Her top choice was her favorite frozen yogurt shop. They usually asked for a resume, a cover letter, and an application. She was excited to continue with her job search. Two weeks later, five places contacted her for an interview. They were a movie theater, a yogurt shop, a candy shop, a video game store, and a coffee shop. She did not mind any of the jobs. They all seemed suitable for her schedule. Financial Aid Pamela got accepted to Harvard University. Her family and friends were excited for her. Harvard was known for being hard to get into. Even if you got straight A's in high school, you could get rejected. You have to also be very involved in school, do volunteer work, and write well. Pamela immediately knew that she wanted to go to Harvard, but she was worried about the money. Harvard was a private school, so it was expensive. Two weeks later, she got an email from Harvard telling her what she got for financial aid. Pamela did not get as much aid as she hoped for. There are two types of financial aid, grants and loans. Grants are good because it is money given to you from the school that you do not have to pay back. For loans, you have to pay it back eventually. Harvard offered Pamela a lot of loans, but not much grants. Pamela told her parents that she would not go to Harvard. Her parents told her that she should still go. Harvard was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. After some thinking, Pamela agreed. She decided that she was going to apply for scholarships. She went to her school's college center and found several scholarships she was qualified for. She applied to a scholarship for history majors, one for violinists, one for Filipino Americans, and one for female students. In the end, she managed to get $3,000 from scholarships. This was a good start. She would get a job at Harvard while she took classes. A pair of Magi pants. Peggy was watching TV one day. It was Monday afternoon, so there was nothing good on. It was mostly just local news, soap opera, or paid programming. Peggy decided to watch the paid programming channel. The product they were trying to sell was Magipants. According to the sellers, Magipants made your legs look smaller. They came in multiple colors. The TV showed satisfied customers talking about Magipants. 
One of them even said that she gained confidence after wearing the pants. Peggy usually made fun of the people on paid programming. This time, however, she wanted to buy the product. Peggy never liked her legs. No matter how much she exercised or dieted, her legs would still be big. Magipants was also having a deal, too. Buy one pair, get the second one half off. If she called within ten minutes, she could get a free pair of Magi shorts. Peggy called the number. She ordered one pair. A week later, the pants arrived in the mail. Peggy tore the package and tried them right away. She looked in the mirror, but did not see the difference. Frustrated, she called the company asking for a refund. Miss, are you sure you don't see the difference? Yes, I am sure, Peggy said. The sales representative tried to offer her another pair of pants, but Peggy declined. That was the first and last time she ordered anything from paid programming. Getting contact lenses Linda has been wearing glasses since she was four years old. She has never liked them. She thought that glasses made her look too nerdy. She felt ugly in them. People called her four eyes when she was little. Not that many four-year-olds wore glasses. Every year, Linda would beg her parents for contact lenses. Every year, they just told her that she was not ready. They were afraid that her eyes were going to get infected. However, Linda's parents surprised her by taking her to the optometrist. After testing Linda's vision, the doctor gave her a sample pair to wear. She put the contact lenses on one finger and put it near her eye. She was nervous. Don't be scared. It won't hurt you, the doctor said. It took Linda 10 tries to get the contacts inside her eyes. It felt weird and amazing. She could actually see clearly without her glasses. At school, everyone kept asking what happened to her glasses. Linda realized that people knew her for her glasses. They could barely recognize her. She kept getting compliments and loved it. Linda also started wearing makeup that since people could see her eyes more easily. She was getting more attention from the popular guys and girls at school. She started hanging out with them. Linda's old friends got mad at her. She apologized and asked the popular kids if her old friends could join them. Lin they said no. Linda decided to leave the popular group. Fishing for compliments. Fishing for compliments means trying to get people to give you compliments. Barbara loved fishing for compliments. She usually says something bad about herself so that people will feel bad about her and give her compliments. She would say something like, I look so bad in this dress. Her friends would say, no you don't, you look great. Barbara has done this so much. One day, one of her friends said, Barbara, you always say bad things about yourself and we keep telling you the opposite. After that, Barbara tried to stop fishing for compliments. It was hard to stop though. She felt like the compliments boosted her low self-esteem. Her therapist suggested she should write down a list of things she liked about herself. It was hard. She would write one thing and then cross it out. Her therapist then asked her to write down a list of compliments she received from other people, which was easier. She wrote things like smart and kind. Do you think these compliments are true? She asked. Some of them, Barbara said. Now I want you to write down why people would say you're smart or kind, the therapist said. For smart, Barbara wrote that she has straight A's, reads a lot of books for fun, and watches the news. For kind, Barbara wrote that she helps elderly people cross the street, opens the door for people, and volunteers at the homeless shelter. Good job. Now you can see why you are smart and kind. I start to believe it, she said. Barbara agreed. Writing down the reasons helped her. 